Well, I'm going to do another poem for y'all. Cotton Elliott called me day four yesterday. Good friend of mine. Lives out around Kitty Clay. He said, hey, I got an idea for a poem. I said, lay it on me. So he gave me the idea. And I wrote a poem. So if somebody was to be here face to face and was to ask me if this poem is real, I guess I'd have to quote Mr. Nightlinger and say, well, if it ain't, it ought to be. This is called The Snubbed Post. Well, old Jip had been steady bashing since his wife left him early last fall. Said she couldn't take no more cow camp and they could just call it a draw. Now, Jip didn't really plumb mind it, living way out there all alone. Said it was sure awful quiet and didn't have use for no TV or phone. Now, the old Lazy F camp was the oldest that the ranch had around. It was built on the side of the old headquarters where the old round pen had once fallen down. Well, the owner was quite sentimental about all the broncs that had plowed up that dirt and the peelers that rolled high to glory and the ones that fell hard and got hurt. So he left the old snubbing post standing and inside the cow camp it still stood. It was outside leg in the bedroom of the big bed made of red cedar wood. Well, old Jip, he sure did love it. Sleeping right there where they'd snap out them dinks. On that old post, he kept a foot rope and a whale line and some hobbles there by the bathroom sink. On the nightstand, he had an old hacksaw with the buck reins and rawhide noseband. The hack knot and four stand Theodore had all been tied up by hand. Right there on top of his dresser, filled with pearl stamps and Levi's and socks, was two good doubled up toe sacks plumb full of old beer cans and small rocks. Now, Jip, he wasn't an old man, but he might have been just past his prime. Seems like he needed a buck fifty every time he tried to turn on a dime. So he let the kids have the rank ones and the young gentle ones too. <clears throat> Jip's body was bent, broken, busted, but his mind was still set at you. One Sunday, I went down to visit, soon after Jip's brand new divorce, just to see how he was doing, maybe help him shoe an old horse. I asked him how come her to leave him, and he walked over and got us a beer. We sat down on his front porch, and I thought I noticed a tear. He said, well, we were talking one evening about how our marriage had lost all its spice. She says, honey, take me out for a movie. They sure wouldn't make me feel nice. Well, the pictures are playing with a love flick that I'd never heard of till that day. The title, it sure sounded boring, something about Fifty Shades of Something Gray. Well, I snuck me in some whiskey and mall, she snuck in her wine. And I'll tell you, the time that movie is over with, they're both feeling plumb fine. But the picture was sure hard to follow. With the booze flowing through my brain. Well, that old gal, she sure seemed ronky. And I'm not sure that feller was sane. Well, time we got back home to our bedroom, Ma throwed down her empty wine cup, grabbed my hobbles from out of the bathroom, and said, Honey, now tie me up. Well, I threw my half-empty bottle, and it bounced off the side of the wall. I grabbed my foot rope as I went to her and bled out a big wild cowboy squall. I reached up for my toe sack to wool her, and we tested that old snubbing post. But I think when that hack smeared her makeup was when she got turned off the most. She bucked plumb out of my hackamore and kicked off that old foot rope. She run completely off with my hobble, screaming, Our marriage just ain't got no hope. But I'll tell you, it answered a question that I'd laid down with at night in my head. I always wondered if it'd still hold a wild one, that old snubbing post there at the foot of my bed. Y'all keep snapping.